Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Uh, I'm joined by Conservative commentator Connor Tomlinson. Uh, and uh, also, he's not actually here, but let's have a little listen uh, to the London Mayor, Sadiq Khan. TfL is uh, arguably one of the safest and cleanest transport authorities in the world. We're using world-class enhanced cleaning. We're using hospital-quality disinfectant. We've got more than a 1,000 hand sanitizers. We're using UV light to make sure our escalators are safe. We're also asking Imperial College to come and make sure there's no COVID on public transport. They've found no evidence of COVID in all the testing they've done. But I think uh, after Monday, we should continue making it uh, compulsory to wear a face mask on public transport, where often you can't keep your social distance. It adds an additional layer of protection, but also reassurance. Reassurance? Well, what if I don't... Uh, he expects me to wear a mask, Connor, for reassurance. Well, I don't like wearing masks, so reassurance I don't need, thanks very much. And if, as he just went to great lengths to explain, uh, the tubes and the buses are so, you know, antiseptically clean, why do you have to wear masks on them? It did make me laugh how he's saying, oh, this hospital grade disinfectant, it's, it's cutting edge, uh, cleanliness. I don't wish to disparage the ladies and gents working on TfL and staff on the platforms, but I don't think you're going to fight some sort of deadly bubonic plague by some bloke in a purple vest walking up and down and occasionally rubbing the top of the seat with the same cloth. Um, it does make me laugh as well how he's saying the masks are so important. I mean, number one, as, as lots of people on talk radio have said from uh, the uh, evidence-based scientists to the, the physicists, the actual mask particulates you can get particles of COVID moving through the mesh of the fabric mm. because the holes are larger because they have to breathe through them. So they're not that effective. And we can see that through the, so, so the sister state studies in America and you know Sweden and all that. Clearly, they haven't worked all that much. Otherwise, we wouldn't have needed that, that two and three lockdown, mm. would we? But if he really thought they worked that much, wouldn't he be wearing one at his large mass gatherings, yeah, particularly at the conference? Yeah, well, that's uh, the reason we're talking. Is he a mask hypocrite? Because... Uh, we got footage of him. It was put on, posted on Twitter, attending Dawn Butler's uh, Jamaica night party. Uh, actually, to be fair to uh, Sadiq, he wasn't the only one without a mask mm. on. None of them had masks on. Uh, if you if you see the Labour MPs in the House of Commons, I mean, they look like a bunch of Dick Turpins about to, <laughs> every bank robbers. Every single one of them's got a mask on. Uh, but when they go to their own parties at their own conference, not so much. Well, they all peel it off as well as soon as they're walking out. It's the same thing with the American uh, chambers of Congress. As soon as the debates end, they're all pouring out, handshaking, patting each other on the back and peeling the muscles. It's all a load of theatre. Um, again, with the same thing with the American politicians, the San Francisco mayor got caught recently uh, with one of the BLM founders at a band reunion. Mm. And she said, why she wasn't wearing a mask? Oh, I just got caught up in the moment. Well, ah. isn't that a wonderful ah. excuse to the rest got of us? so excited, I forgot to put my mask on. Yeah, yeah, I, I was going to use that, I was going to use that uh, excuse for all of the house parties I had under lockdown. I mean, I didn't have any officer. I completely forgot myself and I forgot my mask. Oh my God. I mean, the point about masks is, you know, I spoke to a lot of doctors about them. I mean, there, there, there is evidence that, that there's a, they have some small effect uh, in hindering the progress of the virus. Uh, more... Uh, what you will breathe out more than the, your, what you'll yeah. breathe in. So you're protecting other people from what you might have rather than the other way around. So there is some small evidence that they do have some small effect. Uh, but I don't think a big enough effect to warrant uh, millions of people walking around, you know, cut off from the world by these horrible masks that are very uncomfortable to wear and quite why uh, in London the only place you have to wear them is on the tube or on the buses uh, is a bit odd well it, also the, the massive environmental impact that all of these uh, PPE measures have had number one we've been mainly buying them from China anyway so we've essentially been financially rewarding the country that unleashed the pandemic on us but also there's been about what is it 53 million were sent every day to landfill you've got more masks than jellyfish in the ocean I at this point. I mean you see them everywhere don't you yeah it's a new thing you know I have to keep telling my dog don't pick the mask up <laughs> you know I mean the masks everywhere particularly the paper ones we've created a horrible new litter problem haven't we well, they, they take a fair amount of hundred years to biodegrade as well so not only were they not uh, strong enough a mesh to block COVID coming in, but they are strong enough a mesh to sit around for hundreds of years, ensnare the feet of birds, suffocate a bunch of wildlife, and clog up our landfills. So I don't quite understand why, for the the uh, vast ineffectiveness, as Sadiq Khan clearly reveals by his own uh, preferable behaviour by choosing not to wear one at the conference, mm -hmm. and as the Labour Party 
They haven't particularly enforced their mask mandates very well at their own conference either, so they're clearly not believing them very much. But they're happy to trash the environment, and they're happy to give the money to a lot of manufacturers overseas from the exact country that made them all wear one, made us all wear one in the first place. Yeah, I mean, the, the problem with the likes of Sadiq Khan, you know, who uh, proposed that we should all wear masks... Uh, is that you're going to get hoisted by your own petard pretty quickly unless you literally wear one 24 hours a day or, or at all times when you're out of your house. And the way he's gone on about masks, he really should wear one at all times, and yet uh, not at Dawn's party. <laughs> yeah, well, also, I, anyone who's thinking of razor wit from the likes of Sadiq Khan, the Labour Party, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> first of all, day. I think he's purposefully dulling his wit because otherwise anything sharp no, in that no, party... I don't, I don't think he has to try very hard on well, that. Well, well, yes, but I think anything sharp in the party, he'll uh, host an amnesty for it if it's around. <laughs> but this is also the same man who's blaming flooding on bridges uh, on climate change. Now, normally bridges don't particularly flood, but perhaps it might have something to do with the mass barriers you put up either side that stops the water draining off yeah. it's a problem of his own making same with the mask issue he's also the man uh, we covered this on friday i mean it just makes your blood boil uh before uh, the killer of sabina nessa was arrested and uh, at the point where uh, we weren't even sure that she'd been killed or, or we didn't know what mm. had happened to her uh he came out like the day before all the details emerged to say uh, that because of course the Sabina case, Sabina Nessa brought into sharp focus that women don't feel safe on the streets in mm. London, uh, and well they might not. Uh, knife crime is soaring, dangerous attacks are soaring, the number of murders are soaring. Uh, the day before the fate of Sabina Nessa was fully uh, revealed, uh, the Mayor of London announced that his two top priorities were air pollution and climate change. I mean. Really? What planet is this guy on? Unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately for us, generally speaking, violence against women in, in the UK were one of the leading countries in reducing it. You're never going to fully eliminate it, of course, and uh, yeah. to Sabina's family, it's you know, the whole country outpours their sympathies. But these sort of cases, um, uh, particularly the gang violence in London, and that, they are preventable. He was the man who stood on the platform saying, stop and search is so endlessly racist, we must abolish it. And truly, if, if he is stumping for the lives of, of minority ethnic people in, in Britain, wouldn't he want to save them by stopping a lot of very violent people carrying weapons which are going to end their lives a pretty basic political point i mean he's the mayor of london so i don't think climate change mm. uh, should be even within his remit uh, climate change should be left to the leaders of countries not people running one city well, he's not going to be able to it's do ridiculous. very much about it because he but, can't exactly propose the policies why it. why you know it, the important thing is to make these streets safe to, to stop the knife crime to stop the murders and to make women feel safer on the streets and he comes out in the middle of all this storm surrounding some poor Sabina Nessa and says his two top priorities are air pollution and, and climate change. I mean, he's he's just he's unrescuable, isn't he? There's nothing you can do about this guy. He's lost in virtue sp signalling space. He's disconnected from the from the concerns of the electorate, and I think, unfortunately, as the previous uh, election showed, he's been allowed to because Sean Bailey came out today, for example, and on on. Uh, Good Morning Britain and said he was so shocked by uh, Angela Rayner's comments at the Labour Party conference because it shuts down debate and it's like well thank you Sean I'm really glad that you pointed out the obvious there because it's almost like the Labour Party don't want to debate at all it's almost like you can't read the room and the fact that the the candidates opposing Sadiq Khan were so incapable of affronting some sort of uh, affirmative value for example Tory party candidate turns around and says oh I'm going to renew Christina Dick's contract well what are you standing for in opposition to your candidate then? Why should anyone vote for, uh, be agree. impassioned to vote for you? And so Sadiq Khan wins by default and he can be allowed to be uh, complacent and disconnected from the concerns of the electorate because there's no, uh, just like the, the Tories are with, uh, with Labour in Parliament, quite the inverse, mm. um, there's no strong opposition. Yeah, we need a mayor uh, who deals with the problems of this city, not the uh, problems of the globe. Uh, does, who, who realises it's knife crime mm. is within his remit. To climate change isn't. It's just pathetic. It really is. Connor, thanks as always for coming in. Connor Chomblitz is there, Conservative commentator. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan.